Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Katie Miller from Nationwide Children's Hospital, and I'm excited to be here, excited to share with you our ongoing efforts towards um, detecting minimal residual disease in children with brain tumors. Um, we are taking an approach of developing a personalized sequencing assay for liquid biopsies of cerebrospinal fluid. So I'm very happy to follow the presentation that was just given. Um, my introductory slides will be very redundant with Felix, but um, here we go. <clears throat> So actually, CSF is the ideal fluid for liquid biopsies for brain tumors and not plasma. Um, these liquid biopsies generally use, as Felix mentioned, sequencing technology to detect circulating cell-free tumor DNA in peripheral biofluids. So as shown here, it's a known biological phenomenon that cells, when they turn over and die, release DNA fragments into surrounding biofluids. Um, and so these <clears throat> assays have potential to detect minimal residual disease with much greater sensitivity than conventional methods, right? So for patients with brain tumors, these conventional methods include MRI and cytological analysis of CSF. Uh, as I mentioned, CSF is really the ideal biofluid for this patient population. And the patients um, at our hospital routinely undergo lumbar puncture procedures to collect CSF for clinical assays, uh, making it accessible to us as researchers for study. Yeah, so a unique aspect of pediatric brain tumors is that they usually have low mutation burden. And their mutations that they do have are private to the individual, so they're not usually shared across all brain tumor types. And this presents a barrier to developing uh, generalized CSF liquid biopsy assays. So what do I mean by that? So in adult studies, right, we, where a lot of the liquid biopsy work has been done primarily, um, many of these assays have been designed to identify cell-free tumor DNA by leveraging the fact that many types of adult tumors share commonly mutated genes, right? We know this. Um, <clears throat> in colorectal cancer, over 80% of tumors have a mutation in APC. In AML, there's three genes that are primarily mutated. So these assay designs are really straightforward, and a lot of vendors actually have created panels to basically sequence your cell-free DNA targeted at these genes or subset of genes. Um, to mimic this approach in pediatric brain tumors, each child would really need a personalized assay that is custom designed to specific mutations in their tumors. And <clears throat> lucky for us, there are several vendors now that are offering these personalized MRD panels at a relatively low price point and quick turnaround time, which is important as we think about eventually integrating this into the clinic. Yeah, so <clears throat> one particular published study demonstrated, it was a beautiful study, utility of MRD detection in CSF from children with medulloblastoma. So importantly, they show that MRD detection preceded radiographic progression in about half of the kids who relapsed. And this approach used an unbiased whole genome sequence to detect copy number changes in the cell-free DNA. So specifically, this approach, the approach that we're taking is not WGS because we do not think that it would um, translate to copy number quiet tumors, right? So we know while medullos are usually driven by copy number changes, not all types of brain tumors are. And so our goal at Nationwide Children's is to develop a comprehensive approach that can really be applied generally to all brain tumors um, despite the genetic alterations seen. So our first approach actually was to just determine if we could even detect tumor DNA in these CSF samples. Uh, using NGS technology. Um, so we took an approach, this is a tumor-informed approach, as Felix mentioned, um, we're using a very similar approach where we have previous exome data from these patients um, from other ongoing studies at our hospital. And we chose high-frequency variants and basically did amplicon sequencing, right? So we isolated cell-free DNA from the CSF, we targeted that particular variant, and we sequenced at really high depth. We got about 50,000 X coverage um, for these variants that we looked at. So our, our first you know, pilot study, we performed this targeted amplicon sequencing on seven CSF samples from five unique patients, and we detected tumor-derived DNA in four of them. And notably, I'd like to mention that all of the clinical assays for CSF cytology reported no evidence of malignancy for all of these cases, which clearly, based on our preliminary results, m might not be true. <laughs> um, this assay, however, has two major limitations. One is that it depletes the DNA. So as we're taking this approach, it depletes the DNA. We're not getting very much yield, as you can see on the right two columns. Um, so it depletes the DNA, and it limits us to targeting only one variant. 
But again, this was proof of principle. We wanted to see that this would even work. Um, but this assay was also important, as I mentioned, because it demonstrated that from low volumes of CSF, we're not getting very much from the clinic, as you can see. And it demonstrated that we could isolate um, enough yield of cell-free DNA to perhaps perform these sequencing assays. Yes, yeah, so given our proof of principle that we can detect tumor-derived DNA in CSF uh, via sequencing, we aim to move towards an approach to target all mutations to determine if there's MRD or tumor-derived DNA in circulation. Uh, so in the seven cases that I showed you previously, um, the initial tumor exomes, we're not doing genome, we're doing exomes, so um, it revealed a range of a number of variants. So our next approach is to design custom panels using the traditional hybridization capture that probably most people are familiar with, uh, where we design, we work with vendors to design biotinylated probes complementary to the regions that we care about and then use a bead-based approach to enrich and sequence only those DNA fragments um, so that we can get the high depth that we need to detect low BAF variants. Yeah, so I do have um, one slide to briefly touch on the R&D of this, the R&D aspect of this assay. So I certainly don't want to undermine the amount of work that goes into this, and I personally think I'd be remiss to not highlight these efforts. Um, <clears throat> so I have three tasks here that over time have really become the focus of our assay development. Um, the first one is extraction of DNA. So I mentioned that we obtain relatively low volumes of CSF, which is furthermore challenged by the fact that the cell-free DNA yield in these is not very high. Um, so we are aiming to optimize an approach to maximize the yield, but also thinking about an approach that is high throughput and preferably amenable to automation in our clinical laboratory. Um, with library preparation, we've tested multiple kits from various vendors. <laughs> um, we look for two primary features in these library kits. One is that it's compatible with the low input of DNA and two, that it has the ability to detect low frequency variants. Uh, and something we found most helpful is kit with strand consensus capabilities, um, for example, duplex sequencing technology. And the third R&D task is panel design. So we're trying to balance the size of the panel with the cost and the turnaround time to get that panel into our lab and use it for that patient. Um, so I have two slides of preliminary data now that we're moving towards this panel approach. Um, here I'm showing data, yeah. So we have synthetic DNA controls that we've purchased. So these are um, synthetic DNAs that the vendors um, provide to us and they have these uh, spiked in mutations, right, at 0%, 1%, and 5% allele frequency. So we know the mutations in the sample. We know what frequencies they should be at uh, for all the variants shown on the x-axis. So here we successfully made a panel to capture those variants. Um, we made these libraries from five nanograms input, which is pretty low. And you can visually appreciate, I think, that we detected all mutations in the 5% sample, which is the blue, um, albeit at lower frequency. And for the 1%, which is the yellow, we detected almost all. So clearly some optimization is needed to lower our limit of detection down to or below 1% BAF, but um, this is our preliminary data. And my, my next slide uh, showing is from a real patient sample. So we designed a panel based on their exome data. And here we have four samples. We have genomic DNA from blood and tumor and cell-free DNA from two different CSF time points. And here I'm just showing the germline variants. So we're routinely including rare heterozygous germline variants on the patient panels as sort of like an inherent control. We're getting such low yield of DNA, we wanna know it's like actually from the patient and not contamination. Um, <clears throat> so we made these libraries from one nanogram input and we detected the germline heterozygous variants in this patient uh, in all samples uh, with the exception of a few which were due to low coverage um, that's shown above the bars. Yeah, so um, I want to talk a minute about our next steps. So obviously more samples are needed. Um, and we are also planning to include a plasma draw at the same time as CSF. So patients with brain tumors don't, uh, we don't typically think that they present with blood involvement, right? But there are some studies that show the usefulness of plasma for MRD detection in patients with brain tumors. But we think it's really important to couple that with CSF, which we think is more ideal. So we're just going to include both. Um, to understand like how truly useful that would be. Um, we also plan to incorporate detection of fusion-derived DNA via our capture approach. We can design probes that flank the fusion. 
uh, to detect that fusion-derived DNA. And our workflow will also include two downstream applications um, after library generation. So we've designed our workflow to generate enough mass so that a portion can go for WGS for copy number variant detection, and another portion will go for capture using the personalized panel. And again, this is really all in an effort to um, be comprehensive and develop an assay that is applicable for all brain tumor types regardless of the genomic alterations that we're trying to detect in the CSF or hopefully plasma. So I have many people to acknowledge and thank, and um, this is definitely a huge team effort, a huge undertaking at our hospital, and I guess we'll have questions at the end. 